These are the materials you will need to fabricate the wrist extension splint. You will need a deep electric water bath, a heat gun, a piece of aquaplast, a spatula, and a pair of scissors. Have the patient place their hand palm down on a flat surface. Mark an A by the second MCP joint. Mark a B by the 5th MCP joint. Mark a C by the 1st web space. Then mark a D near the base of the thumb at the CMC joint. Mark a dotted line at the 2nd web space. Then mark approximately two-thirds down the forearm. Make another set of marks about an inch and a half from the previous marks so that the forearm chuff will come up about an inch and a half of the forearm. Extend the dotted line to point D. Then connect points B and A with a straight line slightly extending the line out from point A. Continue down from the end of line A and connect it to point C. Make a line that curves inward to point D. Extend the line downward from point D to the two-thirds mark of the forearm. Do the same on the opposite side of the splint. After the pattern has been traced onto the material and the material has been cut out and heated, place it on the volar aspect of the patient's hand and forearm. Roll the aquaplast at the patient's thenar eminence. Then roll it by the distal palmar crease. Mold the aquaplast onto the patient's forearm holding it down for several minutes, allowing the splint to set. Use the heat gun to make adjustments and smooth out the dry splint. Make sure to flare out the edges of the forearm trough so that it does not dig into the patient's forearm. Once the splint is fabricated, make sure that it clears the thenar eminence and the distal palmar crease. Make sure that the bottom of the splint is flared to ensure patient comfort. Instruct the patient to oppose all digits and then make sure that they can make a straight fist. Make sure that the forearm trough clears the ulnar styloid process. Demonstrated here is the patient's wrist in neutral. However, the splint can also be fabricated to position the wrist in extension.